Welcome to our course, Data Science Project, and in this part of our course, we are going to do credit scoring. So credit scoring is very important to financial institutions because they can be able to identify which borrower is a good lender. So before we go into our coding, let's first have um, small discussions on credit score. So we, let's go here to Investopedia, and this gives us what a credit score is. So a credit score is a number of or a number from 300 to 850 that rates a consumer's credit worthiness. So when the score is higher then that particular or this particular borrower is a very good potential lenders. Of course we are not going to treat all potential borrowers to be the prime target of, of our marketing and promotions. There are also some other things to consider. So for example, the number of open accounts, the total level of debt, repayment history, and others. Also, in a certain company, a certain lending institution such as banks, they can also set a certain threshold of scores as to which this particular lender would be a good or best potential lender. So let's go into our Python. So these are the different packages and libraries that we're going to use for our project. So basically, we have Dumpy, then Pandas, of course, Matplotlib, and Seaborn for our visualization. And cross-validation score too, we need this to validate the different scores of our models and for the grid sort CV to understand and identify the best parameters for our model. And here we have um, imported a random forest classifier and also the logistic regression. Then, of course, we are going to have the standardized or standardized form of our data so we used to have these standard scalar imported as you could see here we have both the cross validation score and the train test split and both of them will be discussed as we go along with our discussions as we go along with our project because each has its own characteristics and proper situation to use it but the question here is this um when are we going to use cross val score and when are we going to use the train test split are we going to use um, both of them in one project or what so we're going to have that in our project discussion then we also have here the roc auc score the aoc or the accuracy score the mean squared um error mean absolute error it's been variance score so all of these things um will be used for us to be able to evaluate the effectiveness and performance of our models along with a uh, classification report then we also have yeah we have this one possible score i think we have possible score yeah model selection so i have um written here twice so this one is for the writing so that our presentation is good is better we use here import warnings because I don't want to see um, warnings every time. So let's run this. Okay, so it is already executed. And this time we're going to read our data set. So let's run this. Let's have some um, things of what our data is all about. So here we could see the customer ID. Let's just make it two so we can see properly. Okay, so we have um, ID. In the first column, the customer ID, the month, name, age, SSN, occupation, annual income, and many more. So these are the names of our columns or features in our data set. I want them to be in small letters, so lowercase. My reason for this is that I want to save time because I don't have to go to the caps lock and something like that for me to be able to write later on or call the certain um, column names so to do that we're going to use um the lower function so let's run this okay let's check if it works and let's have this one so as you could see everything now in the column is written in lowercase so we already have our data set loaded and we have transformed capital letters or the upper cases to lower cases and this time the best thing that we have to do at this part of our project is checking the data quality and of course we're going to check if there is some inappropriate data types and other things in our data set so first thing we're going to check the shape of our data so we have 50,000 rows 
and we have 27 columns. So not all of them, not all of these columns will be used. So the f next thing that we are going to do is we are going to drop some of them. So I have already here um, prepared what these columns to be deleted or dropped. So we have ID, customer ID, the month name, SSN, type of loan, credit history, age. I drop them because they are not actually valuable and essential to our modeling. Let's execute this one. So as you could see in this case, I use here in place equals two because I want the change to be affected also in our main data set. So let's check. So now we only have 19. So we have dropped one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so this is good. As you could see, the age here is object. Occupation is also object. The monthly in-hand salary is also is in float data type, which is correct. But one more thing that is striking here is that the number of nonal values, others are really 50,000 while others are below. For example, we have the monthly in-hand salary, which means around 7,500 don't have values or null. The same is true with amount invested monthly and monthly balance. Now let's check if there are duplicated values. So let's execute this. So there are no um, duplicated values. And what about the null? How many null values we have in our data set for each column? So we're going to use the isNull function. And what we do here is that we sum these null values and we rename the columns index um, to be a feature name and zero to be the null counts. So let's run this. So this way we can easily and properly see which of these columns have zero, have more than zero null values and which one really have the most number of null values. So we have the monthly enhanced salary 7,498. The next one is num of delayed payment which is 3,498, and the least one is monthly balance, which is just 5,062. Now, the question is this, for all of these that have zero entries, do they really have um, proper data or values entered in each row of, the, of these respective columns? So we're going to have that. We will check that later on, and we're going to solve the problem of inappropriate values entered in a certain row. So let's check the F that shape. So we're going to have the zero or the, I mean the age, I mean the rows, the number of rows. So we still have 5,000. Now we are going to drop the null value. So in this case, we have here a threshold. So our threshold here is less than three. So which means that um, three and above, they are not to be included in our data set. We have filtered the is null values which have a sum of null values less than three only and those that are above will be disregarded because there are too much number of null values in the data so let's try this executed so as you could see we have records drop that format so size before cleaning this one so we assigned df that shape to this variable and that we minus the number of rows in this filtered data and we do the subtraction we have 73,000 records that are deleted because they have again more than two null values okay so let's check so here we can have some things very interesting things to see that need to be cleaned so first we have here this one number four occupation we have this inappropriate value. And also for number three, we have this 24. Then we have an underscore, which is not appropriate for this type. We also have this once, um, low underscore spent these things. And we also have this. There are too much number of decimal places or too many numbers of decimal places. So we may as well have to get rid of them. And let's check the tail if we could see something. The enhanced salary, we, we could also see the none. So there are no values in this case. So what are we going to do in this case? Um, what kind of number or value we are going to input in place of the null values? And number of loans, we have two underscore. That must be 
treated accordingly. And we also have for the credit mix, we have this. Okay, we have this dash. And this should be deleted and filled with other values. Have other ones. And M also. Payment of minimum amount. The answer should just be, I mean, the values should just be yes or no, but then we have NM. And in the case of amount invested, we have this one and this. So those things should be properly dealt with. And the best thing to do for you to be able to identify the unique values for each one, we are going to have this. So we have DF, for example, um, age, and you're going to have dot value counts. I know. Sorry, unique. Okay, so we have this number and you could see the inappropriate data or values for this column. Or you can also see value counts. So here we have, in the case of 5,000 or 500, we have this dash. For 32 is this one. So there are a lot of things to be done in age. So we have, let's have the num of loan, num of loan. Okay, num of loan. We have, go to this, 1296, we have underscore. And let's test another one. Let's go to credit mix, credit mix, credit mix. See, so we have um, underscore is 9,789. So that's actually a lot of inappropriate value. And let's have um, delay from or number of credit. Just copy this one. And number of credit. Let's have this. Okay. Executed. This one is better. For us to properly and to easily get rid of inappropriate values or part of that value, we are going to make a defined function. So first, we have here def amount invested monthly. And this is only for the amount invested monthly column. So if there is this value, two underscores, then it is in string column, which refers to this one call. Then we will return um, string call dot split. So we split this one. And then we will just return the call, this particular column. And we do this for amount invested monthly. And then after that, when this one is already got rid of. So we can now change the type, the D type of this particular column. So as you could see, let's go back to this one. Amount invested monthly. This is in object data type, which is supposed to be in um, float or integer. Let's go back to this one and let's have this one executed first. Okay, that is already executed. Now we're going to call this function here and we use the apply function and make this one as our argument so let's um run this okay now let's just check so there's still a lot of things to do okay next thing is we're going to do this another function which will be applied for the num of delayed payment so as you could see we use here different conditions so if the, this one then we're going to split this and return this value else this one and then this replace this and this or this with this if we have this then return just the value of that particular string we are going to apply this function and make that as an argument for this so we use the apply and after that we change the data type to float so let's execute this oops not defined so let's run this one first okay and then we have that now um for the general this can be used for other things generals because this can be applied to a lot of columns so if we have this particular value then we split that then we have this then we split this one too and then return the string value so let's execute this one okay so first is we are going to drop this one so if we could see this value, this row value for this particular column monthly balance, then that is dropped. And this is what I have told you. These are the names of the columns, age, annual income, num of loan, 
outstanding debt monthly balance then we filter that using the general filter general and we change the data type from string or object to a float and then print i plus when it is successfully cleaned so let's run this and then we could see the result so age is successfully cleaned annual income is successfully cleaned sum of loan is successfully cleaned and so on another thing that we can use in the cleaning is to use the apply function i mean here yeah, the apply function and then we use lambda which means this is for each entry or value for th this particular column so what we do here is we split this one this is um, a dash and then what we do is we drop if it contains if changed credit limit as this particular value or has this only value and then after that we change the data type to float so let's execute this that is already executed so remember for the occupation a while ago we have seen this one so what we do what we will do is that we're going to replace it for the df occupation then we will fill it with these random choices so we have this um, enumeration again we replace this value with um, none or not a number or blank and then uh, we fill that with this random choices so let's execute this okay that is already fine and the same thing uh, we're going to do with the credit mix because of this only value if there is no real value so we saw that there is something like this and we fill it with this standard good or bad um, in random choices let's run this and also um, in the case of payment of minimum amount we replace nm with null value and then we fill that with either yes or no okay so let's execute this um, we replace this value with none and after that we fill it with either of these series so high spent small value payments and so on and so forth so let's execute this one in some cases of course for the monthly in-hand salary num of delayed payment num credit um, inquiries there are a lot of null values what we do here is that we fill them with their median values okay so we use fill now function and of course we would like that to take place in the real data set itself so let's execute this one so as you could see we have executed this one last because some of these values are not actually in their proper data type say for example we have the monthly balance this was in object form and we transferred this or transform this one into the flow type because we can never do this fill now if this particular column the balance is not in or monthly balance is not in its proper data format so now let's check so see um, in this case we already have here and a value it's for index or index number four it's an engineer so there are no more um, things that should be cleaned so let's use the info function and let's see what we have so now we already have 48,864 and the age is or age is already in the proper data type format okay the annual income is good okay this one is already 48,864 which is um, before it's not like this we are now ready for more analysis of our data do you want to know more about this channel? Just click these cards. We do have a lot of free data science courses for free like machine learning essentials, deep learning mathematics, and a lot more. Here, you can always learn an upskill for free.